The movie begins in a small town named Urana in Australia. 16-year-old Bo is cycling back home late at night when he hears a woman crying in a cemetery. She is naked, covered in dirt, and is asking for help. Bo is too scared to approach her, but he hides behind a tree and starts filming a video. Suddenly, he hears another noise and witnesses a man crawling out of his grave. This is followed by several more people appearing out of nowhere. Somewhere else, a police sergeant named James gets a call from an old lady claiming that her dog had gone out of control and killed her sheep. He goes to help her and reluctantly puts down the aggressive dog. The police station gets a call about a disturbance coming from the cemetery, and James, being the closest one to the location, goes to check for the cause. To his surprise, he finds the naked lady, who is very scared and doesn't know how she ended up there. Her leg is bleeding, hence, he calls for medical help. A noise from another grave makes him realize that there are more people like her. Dr. Alicia arrives a few minutes later and helps the sergeant collect all the naked people. The strangers do not resist. Instead, they ask for help because they are terribly confused. After gathering five people, they drive to Alicia's health center only a few minutes away. However, they fail to notice an old man who is left behind. Bo, who has been watching the commotion from the dark, sees him walking away and follows him out of curiosity. Meanwhile, Alicia makes the strangers change into clean clothes and checks their medical condition. James assumes that they are on drugs or were performing some satanic ritual because none of them remember anything about themselves. A woman finds a wedding ring on her finger, which reminds her that her name is Kate. Another person is an Italian man who wanders away because he doesn't understand English. Suddenly, he remembers a glimpse of himself running from something. The glimpse reminds him that his name is Carlo. James calms Carlo down before bringing him into the house again. The sergeant then comes face to face with Kate and freezes. He cannot believe his eyes and has to touch her to find out if she is real. Even then, he refuses to acknowledge her existence because she is his wife who died two years ago. Dr. Alicia asks him to stop joking about such things, but James couldn't be more serious. He brings out a picture of Kate, which makes her remember that she was in fact married to James. She even shows him her birthmark, which confirms she is not just a doppelganger. The sergeant bursts out into tears, overwhelmed by the sudden surprise. Elsewhere in the city, the man who is left behind is wandering around while being followed by Bo. He finally catches the boy and inquires what his intentions are. Bo tries explaining that he emerged from a grave, but the man rationalizes that he must be dreaming. He introduces himself as Patrick and asks to be taken to some place he can get alcohol. The kid doesn't want to tag along anymore, but Patrick forces him to. Back in the medical center, Alicia checks the database and finds Kate's medical reports. According to them, she died two years ago from breast cancer. Kate thinks it is ridiculous, so to get her in touch with reality, James brings her to her grave. There is a massive hole in it, which clearly means that she crawled out of it. Seeing her name on the tombstone, Kate panics and runs away. Before James follows her, his fellow policeman, Sergeant Vic, arrives to inspect the situation. James doesn't tell him about Kate or the cemetery people, not wanting to attract more attention to her dead wife. After that, he calls Alicia and tells her there are many empty graves in the cemetery, which could mean that everyone in the medical center is resurrected from the dead. She is asked to keep an eye on them until he finds Kate. At the same time, one of the resurrected sees the name Anna on a book and remembers that it is her name. Slowly, they all start regaining their memories. A while later, James finds Kate at a park they often used to visit. He apologizes for bringing her to the cemetery and promises to take care of her. This reminds Kate of how helpful her husband was when she was on her deathbed. Patrick and Bo, on the other hand, break into the pub. Patrick has been here a long time ago, hence the drastic changes make him lose his mind. He starts breaking things before the boy offers him a beer. After that, they go to a grocery store and rob it, pretending to be a customer and a burglar. They make friends with each other in a short time, even though Patrick is wildly racist and laughs when he finds out Native Americans are allowed in schools. On the way, they come across a statue of Patrick and discover that he was the first mayor of Urara, who died over 150 years ago. Initially, the old man refuses to believe it, but he soon comes to terms with his unusual existence. 
James brings Kate back to Alicia's house, and they discuss what they should do next. If the news about their existence spreads, an army of researchers and scientists will want to experiment on them. Hence, they decide to keep everything private. Carlo again runs into the streets when no one is looking. He is later found by Sergeant Vic and thrown into a cell. The confined place reminds him of the time he and his brother Alexandro were trapped by the American soldiers. Alexandro couldn't take the pressure, so he committed the unthinkable. And while trying to alert the soldiers, Carlo was shot and killed. In the present, he remembers every part of his life. James arrives soon after, asking Vic to go home since it is not his shift yet. Vic thinks it is strange but doesn't question him. Then, James brings Carlo back to the house with the others. Anna knows some Italian and can translate Carlo's sentences for the others. It turns out that he and his brother came from Sicily when the war began, but they were trapped in a prisoner camp in Urana. Anna understands what camp he is talking about because she was also alive during the same time. Alicia recalls that she has a 90-year-old patient named Alexandro Nico, who could be Carlos's brother. James offers to drive him to his brother's house, which is just outside the city. However, while crossing a bridge on the way, Carlos' eyes start bleeding. He screams in pain until his body decomposes and turns into dust. James can do nothing to help and just watches. He quickly collects the dust Carlos has become and returns to the medical center. The following morning, James and Kate talk about what happened after her death. By now, Kate remembers almost everything about her life. She wants to go home to sleep in her own bed, but James thinks it is better if she stays with Alicia for some time. What are you hiding, James? He returns home to freshen up, and we see that he has a pregnant second wife. Her name is Sarah, and she used to be Kate's best friend. In the following scene, we see another man emerging from the ground, as the others did earlier. His grave doesn't have a tombstone, so his identity is unknown. Alicia and James meet in the cemetery and find out that Alexandro died last night, around the same time Carlos did. Alicia thinks it is a coincidence, since he was very old. James is informed about a naked man running about in a school. He goes there to bring him to safety, but unlike the others, this man is aggressive. James has to cuff his hands before driving him to the medical center. Meanwhile, the injured girl, named Kirsty, has been whining in pain since the morning. It turns out that the wound is infected and she needs to get to the town's hospital for proper care. When the new guy is brought to the medical center, Alicia acts strange. She seems to know who he is, but pretends to have met him for the first time. James, Kirsty, and another guy named Charlie, who died about a hundred years ago, set off for the hospital. But when they reach the bridge, the resurrected start to get sick. James registers that it it is the same place where Carlos died. He immediately backs up the car, and the duo's condition improves, which means that they can only live inside of Urana. If they try to leave, they will end up like Carlos. Elsewhere, Patrick and Bo meet again after spending the night apart. Patrick has stolen clothes from a store, but he thinks it is okay since he is the first mayor. He has started to regain his memories of how he looted the poor to make more money as the mayor. He also remembers that he was killed by a Native American man outside his estate. Patrick still has something important hidden in that house that he wants to retrieve. Anna and Kate go out for a walk and end up at the cemetery. Anna finds out that her real name is Maria, and Anna is her daughter, who died the same day she did. She cries on the grave, asking her to come back to life. When she calms down, they decide to go to James's house. They enter through the back door and don't take long before seeing a wedding picture of Sarah and James. Before Kate can brace herself, a pregnant Sarah returns from the store. The two quickly run away before being caught, but Kate is heartbroken. A while later, James finds Kate walking down the street and tries to approach her. However, she refuses to listen to him and walks towards the bridge. As a result, she gets sick like the others, and he has to forcefully bring her back to the medical center. James wants to tell Vic about Kate and the others so they can ask for help from the outside, but Alicia is against it. When he doesn't listen to her, she brings the group away to a secret barn without telling him. 
At the police station, James tells Vic everything, but the man thinks he is bluffing. Later that night, he is driving home when he gets into an accident. The car is destroyed and his head is injured, but thankfully, he comes out of the wreckage alive. Weirdly enough, he doesn't go to the doctor and ends up cleaning his wound in a gas station bathroom. He also acts very strange and gets a sudden urge to find every resurrected person at any cost. In the meantime, Maria visits her former home, which reminds her of her daughter and husband. However, she is soon kicked out by the current owners of the house. In desperation, she goes to the church and declares that she is a miracle sent by God. A worker asks her to sit down and secretly reports to the police about the frantic lady. Somewhere else, Bo takes Patrick around the town and they eventually find his old estate. Someone clearly lives there, but they haven't been taking care of the place. Patrick starts looking for something in the fireplace, but Bo is caught by a bunch of teenagers. They turn out to be Patrick's spoiled great-grandchildren. Despite knowing that the kid broke in, they ask him to sit down and smoke weed with them. A while later, their mother arrives, and they throw Bo under the bus to save themselves. The police are called, and he is taken away, while Patrick watches him from the balcony. He has a box in his hand, one that he was desperately looking for. James goes to the church and finds a crying Maria. He needs her to reveal where Alicia has taken the others, but she only agrees to do so if he finds out where her husband Leon is. James has already done background checking on all the resurrected ones and knows that Leon lives in an old age home. Maria meets her husband after all these years and is filled with happiness, but Leon calls her a whore. Jeez, Leon. James discloses that the man has dementia, but Maria saw that he actually meant what he said. She then gets flashes of the past when she was inside a car with another man touching her leg. The man's name is Don Smith, who James recognizes as the owner of a car dealership. He and Maria go to Don and ask him about his relationship with her. To Maria's relief, Don reveals that he once tried to hit on her, but she slapped him across the face and walked away. After finding out the truth, Maria brings James to the barn where everyone is. He finds Kate alone and claims that he and Sarah only bonded because of her death. However, he is not ready to forget Kate now that she is back. When Kate suggests an official breakup, James panics and asks her to come with him. They drive to a house by the side of the lake that consists of all of her belongings. James bought the house after her death because he felt like the coffin was too tiny. Overwhelmed by everything, Kate kisses her husband and the two make love. I hope Kate showered. Vic has been continuously trying to find Alicia and the group. He searches around her medical center and even goes to interrogate Sarah, but to no avail. Back in the barn, the new guy refuses to speak to anyone. When Kirsty tries making him talk, he pushes her to the wall and hits the others as well. A while later, he comes to his senses and decides to separate from the group. Alicia assures him that he will ultimately remember who he is, but the guy simply walks away. In the morning, Maria goes to Leon with his favorite dish, but he calls her a whore again. God damn, Leon. The scene then goes into a flashback. Maria was always faithful to her husband, but he accused her of sleeping with Dom. He wouldn't listen to her, so she took the car keys and drove away in anger. But on the way, she realized Anna was hiding in the back seat. The car crashed, which caused the death of both mother and daughter. After realizing that she was the cause of Anna's death, Maria visits the cemetery and cries on her grave. Suddenly, she is approached by Vic, who claims that he is here to help her. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.